first question is, how can plastics get into the ocean? Right, so plastics, uh, as you know, um, most of them are not very biodegradable. And so uh, a lot of the plastics that humans use as um, consumers are small items like plastic water bottles or uh, plastic packaging, it's kind of consumer items. Uh, and so um, usually when you use those, those are one-use items and they're disposable and so people throw them, sometimes in the trash can, but oftentimes not in a trash can. So they're thrown along roadsides, they're thrown even into waterways. Um, even if they're put into trash receptacles, they can get blown out, or once they go to landfill, the landfills aren't always secure. Um, so, so there's a lot of ways that plastics can get in waterways. I mean, you know, a big question is how do you keep them out of waterways, right? So After plastic has made its way to the ocean, how can it affect the environment and wildlife? Right, so plastics um, can stay as whole items, right? Or they can become what we call microplastics. And um, plastics that are not, uh, haven't been broken down very much, like plastic bags especially, and small items like plastic bottles can float on the ocean surface or be suspended in the water column. And the danger with the big plastic pieces is that um, a lot of them look like things like jellyfish or medusas uh, or food items. And so uh, there's a lot of organisms out there that eat these, especially things like sea turtles uh, eat medusas. And there have been a, quite a few sea turtles found with plastic bags in their guts. Um, blocking their guts, basically. Also, things like uh, bottle caps, right? All those little bottle caps that, that get loose in the bottles, those are found in things like seabirds. Uh, and there's some great art you might want to look up on the internet. Um, I think his name is Chris. Uh, he's a famous artist who's, who's, who's taken pictures of plastics um, in bird guts in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. So this is on atolls in the middle of nowhere where these seabirds are actually fishing and diving. And they're... they're, they're it, they're imagining that these plastic floating bottle caps are food, right? And so even that the body of the bird decomposes after they die from eating the plastics, you can still see the plastics in there. So how can we help stop plastics getting into the ocean? Well, so, you know, in terms of um, sustainability of, of material consumption and waste, there are, the, I think, three or four steps. The first thing is, re so it goes reduce, reuse, recycle, and I think there's one more. Um, so we should, the idea of using one-use items that are disposable is highly unsustainable, right? So we should avoid, as consumers, purchasing these one-use items if we can, right? So uh, sort of a, a front-end thing you can do is um, reduce your consumption of, of disposable plastics, uh, including um, having your own packaging, right? So there are places in, uh, in the world where there are cities where you can buy everything bulk. So you can actually take in your reusable containers and you can fill up, fill them up, right, with food and other things. You don't have to buy all that plastic packaging in the first place, right? Yeah. Um, basic things like plastic bags for taking home goods from stores. A lot of cities have, out, have outlawed plastic bags now. They've been banned in San Francisco and several other cities around the country. And then reusing, obviously, you want to reuse as much as, as much as you can, right? And then, uh, let's see, recycling. Recycling is like a last effort because they get downcycled. Right? You guys know about that? So. Um, you want to recycle after you've used your disposable plastic item, but that's kind of a last ditch effort. Biosystems engineers devise practical, efficient solutions for producing, storing, transporting, processing, and packaging biological and agricultural products.